Hi, welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I'm Ryan, and this is the fifth time I've tried to film something today. Um, the lights are on, the sun is out, and I'm doing this during the day because it's a Saturday. So today I'm going to talk about books. I'm actually going to get into books. I'm going to get into not a book I'm currently reading. I'm currently reading House of Leaves. It's really long. Um, it's interesting and creepy, but... Um, I'm a very slow reader, so it's going to take me a while to get to the end of that and be able to actually talk about it. But I will talk about the book that I read just before that, which is very different from that book. And that was one of my business books. This is The Great American Swindle Incorporated. It was written in 1932 by A. Newton Plummer. A. Newton Plummer was a publicity guy for Wall Street. He basically wrote press releases, um, talked up different companies that were being traded on the New York Stock Exchange or the uh, market, curb market, and um, through that action, would generate he would generate interest in those stocks. What was happening around this time, uh, if you think 1932, a few years before that, 1929, we had the stock market crash. Um, before that, there was a lot of speculation. Prices were driven up. And, um, and then they, they stopped going up and they started going down and, and we had the crash and then we had um, years of the Great Depression. At that time, uh, before the, the crash, uh, there were these things called pools in the stock market. And what, what would happen is you would have insiders. A lot of times these were pretty high up people in different companies. And they would get together and they would form a pool. Let's say we'd have like 10 people in a pool. The pool would trade stocks. They would pick one stock or one company or maybe a couple companies and they would start trading those stocks. And those stocks would be pretty low in price when they started. But by trading those stocks, they would increase the price a little bit each time and just buy it from each other. And they would generate a lot of interest in that stock. The stock would start going up. There was all this trading activity. And then outsiders would see that trading activity. And they would say, oh my gosh, something's happening here. Clearly, people know that this stock is going up for a reason. And I should get in and also buy stocks too. And then... They would continue to go up, and this could go on for a year. It could go on for months or a year or two. And then the insiders, the people in that pool, would start to sell their stock. And at this point, there are all these outsiders that don't really know why it's going up, just kind of piling in and driving the price up a little bit more. These insiders are selling their stocks at these really high prices, much higher prices than when they started. And eventually, when they've unloaded all their stocks, they're out. And the trading just stops because all of that real... The real action that that stock was based off of these insiders trading in a pool, and the outsiders weren't really creating that much that much interest in it. So once the out, the insiders left, the outsiders kind of left holding the bag, and the the activity would drop in the stock, and the prices would drop, and now you have all these victims who were basically uh, victims of this fraud. So, A. Newton Plummer was a part of that. He was a part of generating that interest. And he was indicted for carrying uh, counterfeit stocks, I believe, from maybe New York, I think New York to um, West Virginia. He was going to sell them to a banker. But um, he was arrested, and he was indicted, and he um, provided testimony in front of the, the House um, about the abuses in the stock market. So in this book, he names names. He talks about people that he worked with, different um, members of the press that he paid off to write positive stories or to generate interest in stocks that he was representing. Um, and he kind of goes through the different practices he used and different frauds, different people in the markets that were, were doing some of the same things or were, were kind of dirty at the time. Uh, this book is signed by A. Newton Plummer, and it's um, number 505 of 2000. It was self-published in 1932. And it was hard to read, um, not, not extremely hard to read. It was kind of scattered all over the place, um, but it got a little more focused by the end. And it's an interesting book because it's a primary source. It's written right around the time of all this market chaos, and it was by somebody who was actually involved with some of the uh, abuses that, that have been since corrected, um, and there's been a lot of legislation and, and rules put in place to stop it. The second book... I will be talking about. This is The Secret. This is a first edition secret. It's a treasure hunt. Let's see if I can get that little ring light in there. Um, this was written by a guy named Byron Price. And, in, and it was written, it was published in 1982. Um, Byron Price took 12 casts, 12 
um, treasure boxes, small treasure boxes, and he went around the country, around the United States, and possibly Canada, and he hid these boxes. And inside these boxes, he buried them. Inside the boxes were keys, um, ceramic keys, and those keys, if they were found, would go to um, picking up a, you, you would turn in the key to pick up a gem. And each, so he had 12 of these boxes. Um, inside the, the 12 boxes were 12 keys. And this book is essentially the, the only way you can find these boxes. There are 12 paintings. The paintings were done by John Jude Palancar, a uh, famous painter. Um, and if you like um, some fiction writing, he's, he's done a lot of covers and uh, illustrations for different fantasy books. Um, so there's 12 paintings. Each painting represents a specific cask in a specific city. There are also 12 verses, 12 verses that are clues. You don't know which clues, which verses go with which paintings, and which verses and paintings go with which uh, city. We don't know what cities they're in. Out of the 12 that were buried in, in the early 1980s, three have been discovered. Um, most recently in Boston. So there's um, a show on it, maybe Discovery or Travel called uh, Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates. Um, they filmed the cast that was found in Boston. Um, it was actually based off of the painting that is also the cover art for this book. These books are really hard to find in first edition. Um, I looked for a year and a half or two years and I never found it. And then all of a sudden I was at this random bookstore near my house and just happened to look in this one little case. So this is a place that's really built on um, impulse buys. And I found it. So I bought it. But um, I had waited so long because the, the ones that are listed online are for thousands of dollars. And that's just more than I wanted to pay for this. So the one I found was very reasonably priced. And uh, I had to pick that up. You can find reproductions of it um, online. And the difference you'll find is this is a black cover. The reproductions have white borders. But the issue with the reproductions is the detail in the paintings. And the, and, the, and the painting, the detail in the paintings are really important because the clues are all in here. So, and there's a, an example of a cask. Um, so, and, and they lead to precious gemstones and um, it's really a community that loves looking for treasure. So um, there's a lot of resources online, a lot of discussion groups, but out of the 12, three have been found. So. That lets you know how difficult it is. I think it was Chicago, Cleveland, and Boston. In that order, I think. And then the last book. I told you I'm a dad. I have a two-year-old who's almost a three-year-old. Her name is Noelia. And um, we read her books. My wife speaks Spanish, so she reads to her in Spanish and English. And I only read in English. But here is a kid book. Um, I grew up with a book that was like this. I purchased one later because we got rid of that book. But this really provides Santa Claus story and the science and the mechanics behind it. Um, but as a kid, you're kind of like, yeah, that's obviously there's some kind of science behind Santa Claus. What really threw me for a loop as a kid was this book provides you details about uh, elves and the different families of elves. And when I saw that, I used to think that I could study elves for a living. I thought that this was some kind of science. There's the elfish family tree. I thought there must be some kind of major in college, elfology, and you could study elves. And like, I think there's a gnome here and a leprechaun. So there's all parts of the same family, a common cave elf, whatever. You could study these things and make a living out of studying and researching elves and helping them repopulate the world and uh, there's all these facts in here about elves, too. It talks about how hard they are to find, um, how rare they are, how you find them, what their temperament is, this kind of stuff. When you read this as a kid, and this is probably 30, 33 years ago, maybe, when you read this as a kid, you think that this has got to be the path to Christmas enlightenment as far as Santa and the elves go. Uh, and I really thought that for a long time, probably longer than I should have. But uh, it turns out that it is not a legitimate career path to study elves and to 
research their protection and their distribution and their family ties and the taxonomy of elf, the elf world. But this is the Santa Claus book. Um, it's by Alden Perks, Perkis, PhDs, and um, really good book. If you're a kid, it's interesting as an adult. It feels pretty real, and I think this is from. Let's see when this, this is from. The, it's got to be from the early '80s. It is from 1982. So this is, I'm doing almost all 80s, well, two out of the three from 1982, and then the other one's from 1932. 50 years difference. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, that's, that's what we did today, but also, because I'm reading a book now, I'm very slow. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is hit up books that I've read recently that I can still remember, and then also provide you with some of the fun books, like The Secret. Um, that I have in my collection um, that are just cool to know about and cool to find if you can find them because they are hard to find but they are it's a neat community to kind of be a part of and to try to find treasure so um, thanks for coming back to my channel again I uh, tried to keep this below 15 minutes looks like I've been successful uh, I know it's still rough but I'm hoping it's getting better and now that we're actually talking about books and the lights are on and you can see the books um, I'm hoping this will get more entertaining for you. Um, for the four people that have subscribed so far, thank you so much. And if you're new to this page and you're, you're watching these videos for the first time, feel free to subscribe. It's not going to be a lot of long videos coming your way. I'm going to try to keep these short and keep them different and keep them interesting and, and hope that you will enjoy what you see. And please feel free to comment below and let me know what you want to hear about, what you like, what you don't like, if there are books that you want me to buy um, I'm, I'm willing to buy books so um, I really look forward to interacting in the future and, and please come back for more thanks again this was book time with Ryan and I am Ryan